Hey, just a heads up that if you ever wanted to make your own videos, Humble Bundle brought back their video and sound editing bundle. It got loads of great software in it, some of which I used to start this channel. So if you are interested, feel free to check out my affiliate link in the description below. If there's one thing that Overwatch is known for, it's really bad balance, but it's also toxicity. Listen, toxic players in competitive games go hand in hand about as much as cookies and cream. I'm not saying it's a good thing, but having played competitive games for as long as I have, I simply know to adjust my expectations accordingly. To be entirely honest with you guys, blatant toxicity doesn't even bother me as much anymore. I simply couldn't care less about what makes somebody say mean things on the internet when ultimately I'm playing ranked in order to get some content. I mean, rank up. I totally care about ranking up. So as you can imagine, things get a bit more complicated when somebody's toxicity is interfering with my ability to win the game. It's one thing to spout dumb nonsense in voice chat, but it's another thing to be literally standing still in order to trash talk somebody in general chat because your mom didn't buy you a microphone for Christmas. But what if, in that same game, I come across somebody who actually watches my videos? I can't just be toxic in front of them when my entire mission on this channel is trying to spread positivity. I mean, I have done my fair share of toxic things on Ranked, which means that this could be Jeff's way of having me repent for my sins. I I guess it is time to combat toxicity with positivity, so sit back, relax, and let's get started. Because our story today takes place on Blizzard Worlds. Now, some of you guys might be wondering what makes this game different from all the other toxic matches I've played in so far, and the answer to that question is actually fairly simple. The skill rating average. Where most of my ranked stories have taken place in and around the diamond rank so far, a man can sit on his main account only for so long before he gets tired of all the smurfs. And what better way to deal with that problem than by smurfing yourself? Some of you might be asking why my old account's MMR is higher than that of my main account, but that is a story for another day. All you have to know is that this is the first ranked game where somebody actually recognized me, which is quite the odd feeling for sure. Of course, the essence of good content are all natural and organic reactions, meaning it was in my best interest to not let on the fact that I was making a video. As such, we would begin our attack round without me acknowledging the text chat while hoping that this isn't going to become detrimental to our chances for success. With the skill rating average being higher, everyone's playstyles would favor a more aggressive approach, and words cannot describe how much I was looking forward to that. Lucia was my hero of choice in an attempt of closing the distance quickly enough before soaking too much damage in the choke point, but true to my playstyle, I would not neglect like the shot calling aspect. Push it, go. Wait, is that actually you, Cliff? It was time for a diversion. Uh, no. That should do the trick. Our hamster friend over here may have recognized me, but more importantly than that was his gameplay. He perfectly synergized with our tracer who could make use of the space he created to start picking off the defenders, though at the cost of their own life. But even so, the advantage was on our side as we colored the kill feed red, and at this point it was obvious that our first attempt at capturing the objective was a successful one. Our Hammond aggressively pushed into the remaining survivors following my callouts, and while succeeding in staggering their Zarya, he just barely missed out on getting their Reinhardt as well. His elimination may have been unfortunate, but it was all for a noble goal. It has the dominance. As you should. Okay, that's how I know that he actually watched my videos, because feeding in the name of assertive dominance is something that I probably put on display on a regular basis. Either way, we were absolutely in business with no defenders remaining to stop us from capturing, and as such, we wasted no time to get the payload on the road. But of course, this wouldn't be a Masters game without an unjustified amount of aggressive flanking, so I decided to get myself into a sneaky position to catch somebody off guard. I called for some assistance to try and combo the enemy Zenyatta, and like clockwork, my Hammond rolled in to do exactly that. My Reinhardt was clearly unhappy happy about being delegated to moving the payload, meaning victory be damned, he decided to join the party. As much as I appreciated my Reinhardt helping us out on the flank, I do have a hard time understanding what exactly he was attempting to shatter. But before I could even pose that question, the enemy Reinhardt came out of nowhere to smack me back to my spawn. Thankfully, my unexpected demise did not end up making too much of a difference, because not only did we do a fantastic job of keeping the enemy team staggered, we also had approximately 8.5 million ultimates at our disposal, and if you combine that with a lack of concept for the idea of ult economy, you know that the second point cap is gonna be ours. Our offense was going remarkably well, and we were not intending to let go off the gas. My tracer was deeply committed to the hunting of bat spawns, and what kind of reddit loser would I be if I didn't join them on the flank? The enemy Zarya stood no chance against our combined forces, and the quick toggle of the thanks voice line showed me that my tracer appreciated the help. Though I don't really understand why they didn't follow up on that elimination by continuing to chase down more survivors. Instead, tracer had decided that they just wanted to stand still. Needless to say that this made her an easy target for the enemy soldier, who eliminated her before she could even hit the recall. 
call. I don't know why the heck they expected that to end any other way, but apparently they were very upset about the enemy team following up on an obvious misplay. Is that even considered a misplay? Don't you need to play the game in order to misplay? I mean, they were standing still. Of course, we still had more than enough players and confidence to continue our assault to make sure that our momentum remains unbroken. And much in the vein of our current formula to success, our Reinhardt made a point for smashing the cube button as soon as we charge ultimate to be the only right way to play the game. My Hammond and I did our best to be as disruptive as possible to the enemy team's attempt of regrouping because Lord knows losing a fight just shy of the final point would spell doom for our team's morale. But to make sure that doesn't happen, our Genji busted out another nanoblade just that he had a bit more trouble confirming eliminations this time around. The enemy Zenyatta made use of our Genji's blunder to take him out, but just because we lost our Weeaboo doesn't mean we're done fighting. Hammond and I continued to shot call even though nobody else in our team said a word and as we were bleeding manpower, we decided to step up a notch ourselves. You would assume that the minefield was only there to create space, but with me booping the enemies into it time and time again, it ended up being far more lethal than expected. And with that frog hamster combo on our side, victory on this attack round was ours. Man, we had one heck of an attack round. A plus shot calling? Check. Unwavering positivity? Check. Old economy? basically non-existent. My team's morale was at an all-time high and I was feeling good about our performance, but it seemed like my Hammond still had some questions. I don't know if I'm tripping or not. I guess we're you. I mean, I am me. Just depends on the definition yeah, yeah, of me. Yeah. Okay, but if you're the guy on YouTube... I, I mean, I, like I do make just... Minecraft Let's Plays that kind of pop in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if you're the guy... Like, uh, the Zen main thing, I watched some of the videos thing. The Zen main thing, that's very descriptive. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jokes aside, I was having a very pleasant conversation with the fella. Needless to say that I wasn't expecting something like this to happen when I queued up for rank, but he had a lot of nice things to say that I very much appreciated. I reckon that's what it feels like when somebody smashes a like button in voice chat. Either way, there was no more time for chit chatting because before we knew it, the round had started and was our turn to prove that our defense was as good as our offense. As the enemies made their way past the choke point, my Hammond and Tracer were ready to prove that their cohesion wasn't just a fluke, jumping on the Zenyatta in the back line just in time to cut him off from the rest of the team. Not even a minute into their offense, the attackers were already completely dismantled without a clue as to whether they should commit to the push or take whoever survived and disengage. Of course, there was no choice to make in the first place because our team continued to tear them apart. But the attackers wouldn't surrender without leaving the mark on our front line as the enemy Reinhardt squished our main tank into submission before eventually falling himself as well. Annoyingly enough, the enemy Widowmaker made a swap to Echo. Needless to say that being a vanilla hero, Widowmaker requires at least a modicum of effort to get value out of, which they failed to achieve. But them being on Echo means that no matter their level of competence, value was guaranteed. Now here is the big funny that I mentioned at the start of the video. Being a toxic douchebag, our Ana took time out of the day to start trash talking set DPS player for doing poorly on the previous pick. The irony is that the enemy team was already flaming each other because apparently their Zenyatta getting dove means that he is throwing the game. The fact that they told us to avoid him in chat clearly indicated that their team was already getting tilted out of their minds, meaning even without us adding fuel to the fire, we could have had a very easy defense against a team that obviously was not intending to play together. But naturally, Sir Dushington the first over here had to stand still and get fragged by the same player that they were talking smack about in chat. And because my Reinhardt and I were trying to cover for them, that created an opening for the enemy Reinhardt to land a massive shatter. That was all the attackers needed to start busting through our defenses while their echo was utilizing their hero's kit to its fullest broken extent. All of which could have been avoided just by not being toxic. But if you believe that this taught our Ana a lesson, you be grossly mistaken. But before we return to why our Ana was clearly in need of a hug, we had some team fights to lose. As much as I respected my Reinhardt's chat energy, I don't know that I have ever seen the main tank get deleted as quickly as he just did. Our Genji was there with another nanoblade to try and defuse the enemy team's momentum, which definitely worked really well for a moment. But that victory was not meant to last, as our Tracer learned the difference between aggressive and reckless plays, eating a sleep dart behind enemy lines to kick off the very next team fight. It was very apparent at this point that our team had a hard time winning team fights with without investing ultimate abilities, which means that as soon as the next dry push commenced, my Reinhardt found himself cleanly wiped off the map once again. We were getting a taste of our own medicine, and let me tell you, it was not very pleasant. As much as we came out victorious in a few team fights, none of these allowed us to establish a strong enough position to hold out a single push without ultimates. There is a lot more I could say about this round, but frankly speaking, that would just be me padding out what is already a fairly long episode. People's egos grow exponentially in size the higher their skill rating, and that even more so when they are playing on a smurf. The long and short of it is that, despite me and my Hammond's best effort of shot calling and flexing, we couldn't get our team to put aside their pride for a greater cause. My Ana immediately started flaming our second DPS as soon as the round was over, and it was in that moment that I realized this is not going to be an easy game.
The irony that we are losing against a team that just one round earlier was already flaming one another definitely didn't go over my head. It was absolutely mind-blowing to me that our Genji Ana duo invested all of this energy to deliberately try and piss off our 2D when you would assume that we're still trying to somehow win this game. Not to mention that for a duo that might as well be AFK until they charge Nanoblade, they definitely had a lot of opinions about somebody else's gameplay. Of course I wasn't gonna say that to them, because if there's one thing I didn't want, it's losing this game for Sequoia. I couldn't care less about all these other nerds, but not only did he watch my videos, he was also playing really well while shot calling and staying positive. I felt that I owed him to at least try and keep this team functioning when clearly my gameplay alone is not gonna win this match. We got more than twice the bank and y'all stop flaming? Like Jesus, just chill. Dude. Yeah, that's all I got, and that's all we had time for anyway, because the blue team was in it to win it, and if they can carry over their confidence on the previous round, then I have a hard time believing that we even stand a chance. And judging by the gameplay, it definitely seemed like they had confidence in spades, because our DPS were too busy arguing, the enemy team could get past the choke point without as much as a scratch on their armor, meaning they would take this team fight to the point in no time at all. My Zarya was immediately overwhelmed by this push, and the rest of our team was left to figure out how we can stabilize. My soldier had gotten a very important pick on the enemy Ana before he had to retreat in response to a diving Winston, but thankfully I was right there to lay into him and following those picks, I started raining discord ropes on the enemy team who would end up being punished for their careless positioning. Zenyatta has such an incredibly powerful shot calling position even just between Sequoia and I. Being able to punish enemy misplaced thanks to our communication could be all we need to turn the tide. But of course we couldn't go a single fight without my teammates utilizing the intermission in order to trash talk one another. We couldn't afford to let up now, and thankfully my Ash had successfully removed the enemy Ana from the team fight one more. The only problem was that the same thing happened to our Ana as well. Things were beginning to heat up as overtime hit and the attack and McCree went on a massive deadeye flank. I tried what I could to cut his line of sight, but I could only stay on high ground for so long before I had to get out of dodge. It was in one final act of defiance that the enemy Reinhardt brought down his hammer as he took his dying breath. Most of us were planted on the ground and there was no transcendence to save the day. Bullets, orbs and hooks were being tossed about in the midst of battle, but within the chaos, there was only one hero who could save us. Bob. Bob was storming onto the battlefield in a flash and in that very moment he was representing a pillar that could not be broken. All of our hope would rest on his heroic shoulders as he contested the objective while sending the attackers back to their spawn. In a game where player egos could not be bigger, it was ultimately an AI that saved the day and helped us hold onto the objective. Unfortunately, the blue team did get away with a tick and a half, meaning there was still some work to do before we can call ourselves victorious. I want you guys to realize we're winning this game while you're flaming. Imagine how easy this is if you stop. Is what I said, but do you want to hear a plot twist? One that I'm certain many of you have already figured out. All of our attempts of mediating were ultimately futile because none of these douchebags were in voice chat. Still wonder why I don't play on my main? Well, whatever the case may be, you have to make do with what you get and people being in voice chat on EU is considered more of a luxury anyway. The bigger problem now was that, despite the fact that Kalashnikov was in voice chat, for some reason he decided to take Hammond away from Sequoia, who up until now was doing a really good job on that hero. While that in itself wouldn't be the worst thing ever, the fact that he didn't at all seem to know how to play that character definitely was. And it most assuredly didn't help us that the enemy team swapped to Mercy Ash, which, let's be real, that's just kinda cringe. Our first attack was immediately halted despite our best attempt. And so was our second one, as well as our third one. When our Ana wasted his nano boost despite his own e-boy only being a few percentage away from his ultimate, I legitimately started to lose hope. I mean heck, nano blades were all that this duo was good for and suddenly they can't even do that anymore? Just as I was about to throw the towel, a final act of defiance. Kalashnikov determined to show that him taking Hammond away from Sequoia was not a throw, swung onto the objective to rain death and destruction onto the defenders. He had successfully split the blue team in half, allowing us to dogpile onto their isolated Sigma and take him out. Utilizing our last bit of energy, Genji deflected a nano boosted bullet straight into Mercer's cranium before pulling out a weep stick to do as much damage as he can without a nano boost off his own. Sequoia put his carry pants on Roadhog as well and cleaned up whoever successfully dodged the Genji blade and at last we found ourselves on the objective. This game ended up being way more difficult than it had any right to solely because some people decided to needlessly waste their time getting toxic in text chat. Which by the way is about the most pathetic way to be toxic in the first place. But thankfully, none of that mattered anymore because the game was over and we would finally be released from this lobby. Yeah, but, yeah, but keep, keep it up, man. Keep it up. Yeah, you too, man. Keep it positive. GG's. It sure is funny how I met one of the nicest players this season in one of the most toxic lobbies. For him to stay positive from start to finish.
finish no matter how much people were butting heads. If anything, that should be an inspiration to the lot of us. Sadly, I cannot end this video off with a satisfying increase in skill rating because I'm still doing my placements. But hey, this game was definitely an experience in the half anyway. And if you guys enjoyed this episode, do let me know by dropping me a like on your way out, subscribe if you want to see more, and definitely hit that bell icon to not miss out on my next upload. I hope you guys have a fantastic day, and until next time, peace.